After 19 years, Metroid Dread is going to give us a new 2D Metroid experience when it releases this October. It's not a remake or a remaster, but a continuation and conclusion of the story arc which began with the first Metroid game 35 years ago. Metroid Dread is taking Samus to a new planet, home to a new threat. And even though we saw a lot of this game during the Nintendo Treehouse and the development history video, there are still a lot of questions we have. Like, how big is the planet ZDR? Why are the Emmy robots hunting Samus? And what is the deal with this Chozo? We're going to take a closer look through the analysis machine. Let's start with the first thing we saw in the trailer, that being Samus' new suit. It's definitely original, but it looks kind of similar to her suit in Metroid Fusion. This suit was the result of Samus being infected by the X-Parasite at the beginning of Fusion, where parts of her power suit had to be surgically removed, and thus, the Fusion suit was created. Upon closer inspection, the Fusion suit looks like Samus's classic power suit wrapped in some blue substance. The same can be said about her suit in Metroid Dread, though there isn't as much blue this time, and the yellow from her power suit is replaced with white. In the Nintendo Treehouse, one of the representatives stated that the game is a sequel to Metroid Fusion, but her suit looks a little different from her Fusion suit, and that that will play a part in the story. This makes me wonder how long after Fusion Metroid Dread takes place, and if this is an alteration of her suit from that game. Maybe something happens at the beginning of Dread that causes her suit to look that way. Did an organism wrap itself around her suit, causing it to look like that? It would certainly add to the urgency of Samus leaving the planet as soon as possible. This brings us to the next section of our analysis, the planet ZDR. Unlike other Metroid games, Samus's ultimate goal in Dread is to make it back to her ship. Usually, her missions begin with her exiting her ship, and she can go back to it to save her progress and replenish ammo and health. Now theoretically, in Metroid Dread, she will still begin using her ship to land on planet ZDR, but something might occur that separates her from the ship, transporting her to the first location at the planet's core called Artaria. In the development history video, we saw a clip of her waking up on the ground. Maybe she gets knocked out at the beginning and wakes up at the center of the planet somehow. Seems likely, and of course, she would wake up without all her gear. Again. Artaria is located at the planet's center, and we saw how big it is during the Nintendo Treehouse when Samus entered the map room. As you can see, it's quite huge, with most of it being covered in blue, but why are some zones different colors? Well, the ones highlighted in gray are the Emmy Zones, where the Emmy robots roam. The purple zones are elevators leading to other areas, the red zones found in the next area Cataris are drowned in high heat, and the yellow zones are save stations, map rooms, and communication zones, which let you speak to Adam, the computer on Samus's ship. Adam first appeared in Metroid Fusion and was named after Adam Malkovich, Samus's former CO in Metroid Other M. In Fusion, Adam was your guide, telling you where to go and what to do. However, in Metroid Dread, he will only give you hints and additional information about the planet, including creatures you've encountered, locations you've visited, etc. But back to the map, as there are a couple of icons that weren't explained. This icon in the Emmy Zone looks like the central unit, so it's safe to assume this is where you'll find the Omega Cannon to destroy that particular Emmy. And then there is this icon, which is currently undefined, but we did see earlier that it leads to what looks to be a teleport station. It could very well not be, but given that we saw them in Metroid Samus Returns, it wouldn't be surprising if they made a comeback here. We also saw another one of these stations in the next area, Cataris. What's important to note is that the emblem on the device and the map is purple instead of red like the one back in Artaria. And considering Cataris on the map is highlighted in red, maybe the teleport station on Artaria only goes to Cataris, and the one on Cataris goes to a different location that hasn't been discovered yet. It's a sound theory, and it would make for an additional challenge if you weren't able to fast travel to any other teleport station as you did in Samus Returns. Of course, the map is going to be your best friend throughout Metroid Dread, and it'll be displayed in the top right-hand corner at all times unless you use free aiming. Doing so will make the map disappear as to not obstruct your view of what's behind the map. The map will also emit a blinking white light if there is a hidden item to discover in a room you've explored, such as a missile expansion or energy tank. When found, these are marked on the map until you collect them. 
So we know how the map works, but this makes me wonder how many more areas there will be to explore before reaching the surface. We already have Artaria and Cataris, and judging by the planet map, it looks like there may be five more areas to explore, depending on how they're arranged. In the Artaria map, we see an elevator room on the far left, and another one at the top. Chances are, these lead to other areas not shown in the Nintendo Treehouse. Are there any other hints to determine how many areas there are in Metroid Dread? There just might be. If we look at the cover art, there are seven Emmys behind Samus, and if there is one Emmy per area, that must mean there are seven unique places to explore on ZDR. Unless the damaged Emmy at the beginning counts as one, which we hope it doesn't. Even the Metroid Dread Report Volume 2 made note of these seven shadows, but it was more to imply how many more Emmy Samus will face in Dread. However, the report concluded with, in the next Metroid Dread Report, seven key words that define Metroid. What is the deal with the number seven in Metroid Dread? Maybe there are seven areas to explore in total. And what could the seven words that define Metroid be? If they're talking about the Metroid creatures, one of the words must be Nightmare Fuel. Okay, that's two words, but anyway. Regardless of how many areas there are in total, hopefully they're as big as Artaria, which is already huge and full of organic life. Creatures are around every corner trying to attack Samus, and they're also abundant in the background, casting shadows against the strong rays of light. And if you look at that scene again, you'll notice the camouflaged boss Corpius sneaking around, who Samus will fight later. Makes me wonder what other bosses will be foreshadowed into the background. The animals on ZDR are your typical Metroid creatures that'll attack Samus simply for moving. What's curious, however, are these blue moth-like beings that are seen gathering around the damaged central unit. They are also seen later flying around a hallway. It seems like they're an indicator of something in the area, but that remains to be seen. What also remains is that of a fallen civilization, most likely of Chozo descent. I say most likely, but it's pretty obvious that the Chozo inhabited this planet, as indicated by the countless Chozo statues and wall carvings in the map room. That said, there also appear to be human-made structures on the planet, most notably in the Emmy Zones. It makes sense, considering the Galactic Federation sent these robots to the planet, but did the Federation already have outposts stationed there before? It seems like it, because a lot of these rooms don't look like they were built by a non-human race. This then brings us to the central units. These biomechanical computers control sections of the planet, and they look kind of familiar, don't they? While yes, they clearly look like Mother Brain, it's important to remember that the Galactic Federation also has organic supercomputers called the Aurora Units, which were shown in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. This raises the question, are these central units made by the Chozo, or the Galactic Federation? After all, they give Samus the Omega Cannon to obliterate the Emmy robots. We also briefly see a central unit in the Metroid Dread announcement trailer, covered in armor. The one Samus found in the treehouse footage was already damaged, exposing the brain-like substance it's made of. This makes me wonder if you'll have to fight the other central units to receive their Omega Cannons. It's a sound theory, and I'm willing to bet that these are Chozo creations, given that they're designed to control the planet. There's also a weapon called the Omega Stream, which is used to expose the weak part of the Emmy to use the Omega Cannon on. And speaking of the Omega Cannon, there was another weapon with a similar name in Metroid Prime Hunters, one that dealt devastating damage in single player and multiplayer. It was basically Metroid's version of the BFG 9000 from Doom. That said, the Omega Cannon in Metroid Dread seems to have no relation to the one from Hunters, as it doesn't deliver a devastating blast that could even harm Samus if she's too close. But you know what will harm Samus if she gets too close? The Emmy Robots. Dubbed the Extraplanetary Multiform Mobile Identifiers, the Emmy are research robots sent by the Galactic Federation to ZDR to investigate a transmission claiming that the ex-parasite from Metroid Fusion is still alive and on the planet. For some reason, though, they want to kill Samus, which isn't great for her, as the protective platings on these machines are made up of the strongest stuff in the universe, according to the Metroid Dread Report Volume 1, which is the game's development blog. Considering the Emmy are most likely sent to dangerous worlds, it makes sense that they would be coated with some strong element. What could it be? Adamantium? Vibranium? Unobtainium? 
Joking aside, what is most curious about the Emmy is that they try to kill Samus even though they're supposedly research robots and not combat machines. There are a few theories to why this is. The first one is that they've somehow been corrupted. They're no longer under Galactic Federation control and are out for blood, similar to the Guardians in Breath of the Wild. The next theory, though, is that eliminating Samus is part of their initial programming. After all, Samus isn't exactly friends with the Galactic Federation after what she did in Metroid Fusion. She destroyed their costly Metroid research on the BSL station, and surely, they are not happy with her. It wouldn't be surprising if the Galactic Federation sees Samus as a threat against their future operations, therefore programming the Emmy robots to kill her on site. I did hear another theory that maybe the Emmy are programmed to eliminate anything resembling the X parasite since Samus was infected with it in fusion, but given that the vaccine she received eliminated all traces of the parasite, I find this unlikely. However, since Samus's DNA is now infused with Metroid DNA from the vaccine, maybe the Emmy are trying to eliminate Metroids as well? I also find this unlikely, as the Galactic Federation is trying to weaponize Metroids, so killing them would be a conflict of interest, to say the least. Also, in the Metroid Dread Report Volume 2, it seems to be implied that Samus is still working for the Galactic Federation, which explains that they sent the Emmy to research the X-Parasite, but then went dark, and Samus, on her subsequent mission to investigate what is happening on ZDR, encounters the Emmy to find them corrupted. Could it be that she is indeed still working for the Federation and they're leading her into a trap? Or are the Federation completely ignorant of what happened to the Emmy? While many have taken this quote as confirmation that she's still working for the Federation, I don't believe it confirms it. Because even though it says Samus is on a mission to investigate what's happening on ZDR, that doesn't mean the mission was assigned by the Galactic Federation. It could be that she followed the same distress signal they did. Either way, she's still in danger from the Emmy. Fortunately, the Emmy aren't there to bug Samus throughout her entire mission, as they are restricted to specific zones. Just know that if you come across a pixelated door, there will be an Emmy there to greet you upon entry. So far, we've seen four types of Emmys. One at the beginning that is damaged, a second one that can't crawl through tight spaces, a third green one that can crawl through tight spaces, and a fourth one briefly seen in the trailer that goes at supersonic speeds. And yes, they look like they were made by Aperture Science. Or by and large. If caught, Samus can evade the second one by sliding through crawl spaces. The same can't be said for the third one though, so she'll have to enable her new power, the Phantom Cloak. This brings us to Samus's new gear and abilities in Metroid Dread. The Phantom Cloak is an Aeon ability she acquires by killing the boss Scorpius on Artaria. Metroid Samus Returns introduced Aeon abilities like Scan Pulse, which showed hidden secrets around a map, and Beam Burst that essentially turned her power beam into a machine gun. The Phantom Cloak is the only confirmed Aeon ability so far in Metroid Dread, and it turns a Samus invisible until her Aeon meter is depleted. It will also go down faster if she moves, kind of like the Cloak in Crisis. Filling up the Aeon Meter required Aeon Orbs in Samus Returns, but in Metroid Dread, it recharges itself immediately after disabling the Phantom Cloak. Very convenient. As for the new gear Samus has equipped, the Spider Magnet turns her into Spider Woman, letting her crawl up walls and ceilings without the need for the Spider Ball. Oddly enough, we didn't see her signature Morph Ball for more than a couple of seconds in the reveal trailer. It wasn't shown at all during the treehouse, and she usually gets her morph ball close to the beginning of her missions. I'm certain, however, that the final room shown during part two of the Nintendo treehouse is where she gets her morph ball, judging by the tiny crawl space that also was seen in the trailer with the morph ball. Case closed. Now, this makes me wonder if the spider ball will even be a power to collect in Metroid Dread. Maybe the spider magnet can be used in combination with the morph ball? but that would mean it's restricted to the blue magnetized sections on the walls, whereas in Samus Returns, it could connect to any surface unobstructed by ooze. Guess we'll just have to wait and see. What's curious is that on Cataris, we see an unknown device that unmistakably looks like a morph ball entrance. Given the tubes above and to the left of it, it looks like a cannon of sorts. We've seen this before in other Metroid games that shoot the morph ball at high speeds. Along with the supposed teleport stations, these could make backtracking a heck of a lot easier. As for Samus herself, this is the fastest and most agile we've seen her yet. Her melee counter from Samus Returns makes a comeback, only this time she can melee while running. 
This is great, because as cool as the melee counter was in Samus Returns, it did put a halt to the pacing, as Samus could only perform it while standing still. Also, she can now slide through tight crawl spaces instead of being restricted to her morph ball. Granted, it only works for short crawl spaces, but it'll make traversal much more seamless now that she won't have to stop and go into morph ball mode every time. Metroid still can't crawl, but it sure can slide. Mercury Steam also put in some work with her animations, as she puts her hand on walls if she's pressed against them. Even when she's shooting down a crawl space like in this clip, she'll grab the edge of the wall. This was pointed out by Dan Root on Twitter, and someone replied saying that Chris Seaver, the director of Conker's Bad Fur Day, considers this a litmus test to tell if the devs are being lazy or not. To which Chris Seaver himself replied, It's the little things. They turn into a lot of things. Oddly enough, this actually gets me more excited for Metroid Dread, knowing the amount of care Mercury Steam put into this game. I also hope an equal amount of effort went into the story, which is the last thing we'll cover in this analysis. The story begins with a mysterious transmission, claiming that the X-Parasite, thought to have been eliminated in Metroid Fusion, is still alive and on planet ZDR. The Galactic Federation sends the Emmy to investigate this, Normally this would be a mission the Federation would hire Samus for, but chances are they didn't because of what happened on the BSL research station in Fusion. Now here's where things get interesting. Earlier we saw remains of a Chozo civilization on planet ZDR, but if that wasn't enough, we saw a brief snippet of a living, breathing Chozo in the reveal trailer. This is the first time in franchise history we've seen a living Chozo outside of a still image flashback from Zero Mission. As cool as this is, there is no context behind this single shot. We don't know where or when it takes place. Hopefully, it is set during the events of the game, as every time Samus stumbled upon a Chozo homeworld like Zebus in SR388, all the Chozo were wiped out. Now, who is this mysterious Chozo? Well, to get some idea, we have to go back to the Chozo memories of Samus Returns. These memories summarize the tale of the Chozo's arrival on SR388, discovering the Aeon Element and the X-Parasite. This is why they created the Metroids in the first place, to combat the X-Parasite. However, the Metroids turned on the Chozo, causing them to seal the Metroids below the planet. The final memory shows the Chozo scientists and overseers talking to another Chozo that looks to be a more powerful figure. However, this is not the final memory. After unlocking this one, it distorts into a blood-red filter, showing a new memory. The Chozo scientists and overseers are dead, and the powerful Chozo was brandishing an arm cannon this whole time, now ordering the soldiers to go back into the planet for some unknown reason. This has to tie into the events of Metroid Dread, and perhaps this Chozo in the trailer is the same one who killed the scientists in the Chozo memory. It's hard to make out its entire getup, but it does look similar garnering a blue dot on the shoulder pads. Though that might be a common getup for the Chozo. Given the final memory in Samus Returns, if this is the same Chozo, then he is one evil son of a gun who's out to make Samus' mission in Dread that much more difficult. It looks like he's controlling one of the facilities Samus explores too, acting as a sort of puppet master on the planet. Also, his beak is moving, so he's gotta be saying something. Maybe he's talking to Samus, or a computer controlling the facility. This brings up another theory. Maybe this Chozo is evil, because it's not actually a Chozo at all. It's an X-Parasite! Think about it. When the X-Parasite finds a host, it kills a said host, and turns into a full-blown mimic of that host. This is what the SAX was in Metroid Fusion, an X-Parasite that mimicked Samus and her abilities. Perhaps this is an X-Parasite mimicking the Chozo that used to be a renowned leader, meaning that the Chozo are indeed extinct, and the last thing resembling a Chozo is actually an X-Parasite. That said, it could still very well be an evil Chozo, I'm not putting that aside, but I'm willing to bet money that this could be X-Parasite mimicry. That's why it killed those scientists and overseers in the Chozo memories. It was trying to protect its own species. This is part of what makes Metroid Dread exciting. This is the conclusion of the story arc between Samus and the Metroids. And if the Chozo have everything to do with the Metroids beginning, they must have something to do with their conclusion. Same with the X-Parasite. It could be a bigger deal in this game than it was even in Fusion. But anyway, 
That's all for this analysis on Metroid Dread. Did you notice anything we didn't? Sound off in the comments section below, and subscribe to Game Explained for more Metroid Dread content leading up to its release. Also, check out the videos on the right for more topics that you might be interested in. Until next time, bye.